Hi, this is Chris Overholt, and this module will go over the verification and validation of fire models uh, as part of the 3D fire modeling course. Um, in this module, I'd like to talk about uh, the verification and validation of fire models in general, but also uh, specific to Fire Dynamic Simulator FDS and uh, what guides are available, uh, the definition of verification and validation and what that means for the model end users and the model developers. Now verification and validation uh, have become an important topic in fire modeling and I'd like to distinguish between the two uh, before we move on. So um, verification is defined uh, by ASTM uh, E1355 which is a standard for uh, the determining the Let's see, I'll show it here. Here is standard guide for evaluating the predictive capability of deterministic fire models. And this applies to uh, zone models, field models, um, all types of fire models. And this guide lays out um, the process of verification and validation for both of those. So with that, the definitions here. Uh, the verification is defined as the process of determining that the implementation of a calculation uh, accurately represents the developer's conceptual description of the calculation method and also the solution to the calculation method. Um, essentially, verification answers the question of is the math right? In other words, in the submodels in FDS, for instance, uh, the radiation submodel or the pyrolysis submodel uh, is the math or the way that the code is programmed is the math correct and does it match uh, the developers concept of what was supposed to happen and we'll look at some examples of that later on one example of verification from the FDS verification suite is called radiation inside of a box and in this example um, this is included with the FDS uh, installation and we'll actually look at this in a few minutes. Uh, what this does is set prescribed conditions on the walls and it's a one-step uh, one calculation and on the right side here you can see various uh, a line of devices going up and down the wall um, and we have radiation coming from a hot wall going inside of a box and what this case serves to do is to ensure that the radiation submodel is programmed correctly and it's a simple case uh, one would think it's a trivial run but it's very useful in seeing if uh, one of the lines of code in FDS uh, may have a problem. Another example uh, shown here is a 2D solution to the Navier-Stokes um, equations. Uh, here it shows a slice of the pressure um, on the left side is a coarse grid, on the right side is a finer grid, and uh, in this case, looking for a convergent solution uh, as you find the grid. So these are both examples of checking the math of the model to make sure that it uh, doesn't have any bugs uh, in the actual code. Now on to validation. Uh, ASTM E1355 also defines validation but it's defined differently in that it's defined as the process of determining the degree to which a calculation method is an accurate representation of the real world, that's the key part, from the perspective of the intended uses of the calculation method. So in essence, uh, validation answers the questions, are the physics right, or can FDS or some other fire model do that, such as can FDS model sprinkler activation, or can FDS model uh, flame heights accurately, and so on. And so validation cases are typically compared to real-world experiments that are instrumented well at a high enough resolution to where we can compare FDS to experiments such as temperatures, flame heights, heat fluxes, sprinkler activation times, and so on. So validation is different than verification in that it's not only a check of the math, but it's a check of the physics and how well they represent the real world. Uh, some examples are given uh, in the guide that we'll look at in a, a minute. 
uh, from the FDS validation guide. And from this, uh, there are numerous uh, experiments that have been compared to FDS where the uh, experimental model was built in the FDS geometry, fire conditions, boundary conditions, and so on. And it was instrumented in a way that was similar to the experiment so we can compare side by side the results. And shown here uh, is a typical plot from the va validation guide where we have uh, hot gas layer temperatures from a specific test and we have two different curves shown here. Uh, typically the solid line is from the experiment and the dashed line is from FDS. Uh, on the right we have the hot gas layer height uh, compared and you see the um, general trends are followed by FDS. Um, this is very useful for a couple of things. One thing it's useful for the end users are able to see and quantify how well FDS performs for certain situations. Um, another thing that it's helpful for is for model developers. It's very useful for them to see where work needs to be done and it quantifies uh, real world cases with FDS simulations. So very useful um, and this is a typical uh, set of plots from that validation guide which are full of plots like this. Um, in the end it's up to the end user to decide for himself if he's using FDS in an appropriate manner for his solution. Uh, here's another case of plot, another set of plots from the World Trade Center uh, FDS simulations. This shows heat fluxes to the columns um, and again the solid line here in the plots uh, indicates the experimental data and the dashed line indicates the FDS simulation results. Um, there are many different uh, validation suites, uh, validation experiments in the validation guide and they're continuously being added um, and, and work on this is, is continuous because validation is essentially an ongoing project uh, to compare FDS to real world results. There's another example from uh, UL and NFPA Research Foundation experiments where sprinkler activations uh, were modeled. Um, here's a layout of the experimental setup uh, where draft curtains were present um, and sprinklers um, are shown here um, as the different dots and FDS was modeled in the same way and the here's uh, here are a couple of the plots from that part of the validation guide where the number of actuated sprinklers is shown over time uh, the solid line is the experimental data and FDS is the dashed line here so this compares uh, sprinkler activation and FDS and again it's important to note that uh, these are provided as information to the end user and ultimately it's in the hands of the user or designer to determine if uh, FDS or any other fire model is adequate for the problem they are handling. So in summary, verification and validation. Verification checks the math of the model, uh, that it's in alignment with the developer's conceptual vision of what it was supposed to be uh, using simple uh, checks, energy balances, radiation calculations, uh, heat transfer calculations, and so on. Validation, on the other hand, uh, was shown as a comparison to real-world experimental data. Uh, whatever that may be, uh, this is helpful for uh, seeing how well the model is approximating reality, how well it's performing for a given application. Um, and finally, this affects uh, the verification and validation affects end users, model developers, and researchers in different ways. Uh, for the end users, it lets them see uh, where FDS is appropriate, if it's performing well in a certain area, and it lets them decide uh, how to apply the model. For the developers, it tells them how to, where they need to work on specifically, or what physics in the model need to be improved. And for researchers, the same, it directs them on uh, current topics and uh, research on the model. So here are some examples of areas that currently need more work um, as indicated by the FDS roadmap um, and various research work going on. Uh, liquid pool fires um, is one. The, power, the liquid pyrolysis model is sort of in its early stages and is uh, sensitive to many parameters. Uh, the CO, carbon monoxide production model, um, is certainly being worked on. 
and multiple mesh solutions, and this is a wide topic of research uh, from anything from parallel processing to multi-core processing. Uh, these are some areas that uh, are pointed out that need more verification and validation work. Uh, finally, uh, another topic is how to quantify model uncertainty. Uh, in other words, how do you decide that a model is appropriate? You may have two curves uh, showing temperature from the experiment versus FDS, but how good is good enough? Is 10%, 20% error good and applicable to a life safety problem? And again, that's up to the end user, but that can be now quantified using these verification and validation guides. Um, one sort of uh, plot or conceptual visualization of this is the scatter plots that you'll see in uh, the validation guide and in different uh, articles about a model uncertainty, fire model uncertainty, where on the x-axis you have the measured temperature uh, and on the y-axis you have the predicted temperature from the model and then you have this line uh, going across where points that lie below this line um, are being underpredicted by the model and points above this line are being overpredicted by the model. Um, in, in the case of uh, some items, in, in the case of temperatures for instance, um, an overprediction of the model would be a conservative guess. So it's typically uh, preferable to be on, on this side of the line um, although ideally we want to be right on that line. Uh, you also see other statistical measures shown here, uh, standard deviations um, and, and means and errors shown there. Uh, and the last thing that I want to show here is the um, different guides that are available um, that come installed with FDS. There's the FDS user's guide uh, which we've been looking through uh, throughout the course. It talks about input files, um, some examples and so on. Uh, but in addition to that, there is a uh, FDS let's see, uh, verification guide here. So this is the FDS Technical Reference Guide Volume 2 Verification. Uh, and what this is, is a collection of uh, verification cases. Um, we'll be looking at one of these, the radiation in a box. Um, but it goes over what is verification, some past verification work that's been done, um, and then you'll see different sections here um, broken up into the flow solver, radiation, species, heat conduction, pyrolysis, and particles. And under each of these main topics are subtopics. Uh, so under the heat conduction topic, there's a simple heat conduction case. And this corresponds to an FDS file that you can actually run yourself. Um, and it shows uh, what the case is and it shows some of the plots, uh, lots of plots in these guides uh, for that case. So this is the verification guide. Additionally, there's the technical reference guide, volume three, the validation guide. And this is uh, validation as we discussed, and it contains uh, what, is what is model validation, a survey of past validation work uh, that has been performed, a description of all of the experiments that are contained in here and all the experimental data sets. Um, it talks about quantifying error and then finally uh, it's broken up into different uh, various phenomena like uh, hot gas layer temperature, fire plumes, ceiling jets, gas velocity, gas species, compartment pressure, surface temperature, and heat flux. And under each of these main topics are subtopics that correspond to uh, the various um, experimental sets. So for hot gas layer temperature from the World Trade Center test series, um, you'll see a number of plots uh, showing um, the experimental data versus FDS for uh, different experiments. So uh, that gives an uh, overview of the information that's available um, just with FDS, uh, the user's guide, validation guide, and verification guide, um, and how they uh, can serve to help uh, end users use the model appropriately and model developers to uh, improve upon uh, the model.